Can you see it, girl? Is it is my screen shared with the bus? Can you see it or yes? I think. We're going to see about dashboard development. Uh, what things should be included on dashboard development or not? Uh, the best practices. We're going to talk about how you should think you're designing uh, when you build a dashboard. So we're going to see around 14 points that you should. Uh, how you should think like that, this points out to you how you should think when you build your dashboard. So we're gonna go over that issue one. So the first thing that you have to think about when designing your dashboard will be what is the purpose of the dashboard? What for what purpose are you planning to create it? Who also? Is that a question, Joseph? Yes, hi. Um, your there's a bit of uh, audio interference on your side. Okay. Uh, you're, you're not clear. Yeah. Uh, is it clear now or still the background noise? Uh, there's still some some interference. I don't know if it's just me or let me just maybe rejoin again. Okay, hope oh, it's now better, better. I don't think there's much so I can do about it now. Is it better if I continue with the tutorial or? Okay, so like I mentioned before, the first thing you have to think about when you build dashboard would be the purpose of the dashboard, why you're building it, and most importantly, who are you building it for? Who are you building it for? So if is, let's say it's any web to project, so if you are building it to attract kids or uh, adults, 
or older people, you have your dashboard should have different structure for these different audiences. So you have to have the, the most important thing you have to think who you are taking it for. So it really matters. Uh, the audience really matters on your dashboard building, considering dashboard building is usually for another audience. It's not for developers like yourself. It's audience, usually those audience are not developers, they don't have any clue about coding and stuff like that. They just know something to be attractive, something to catch their eyes. So you have to consider your audience when you build your dashboard. So you have to start from there when you start uh, about thinking what my, my design should be. The second important thing would be what content should I put on my dashboard? Which are the most important things? Should I put everything or should I minimize what I put? This is also another question you have to answer when you start designing your dashboard. So you don't have to overload the uh, dashboard with a lot of information. That's not uh, entirely advisable at all, that's not necessary, just the important points should only be displayed on your dashboard. And the third one would be decide the data ink ratio on the graph you should put on your dashboard. So with this one we will talk about in details in the following slides. So let's just go to number four. And when you put something on your uh, dashboard like number or any kind of information, it should have a context. So for example, here, if I put this 5K like this on my dashboard, it doesn't mean anything for me from the audience. It doesn't indicate what the 5K represents. So you have to be, you have to give context for your, uh, con con for your information that you are putting in the information. If you want to put it in some minimized way, creative way, you have to give context for that thing because people need to understand why you're putting every single thing that you put on your dashboard should be uh, well thought. So this one is better, the meter one, putting a revenue study like this, it indicates that it's a revenue value for yesterday's, for yesterday, which is fine, but this one is much better. It, it's just showing it with a, most, with a more structured way, plus it's also showing, uh, showing that uh, last week this was the value, now this is. So it just gives the data more value. So someone can understand that considering for, from last week and today, the value is like this, which is more understandable, readable by people. So you need to give context for what you put in your dashboard. Uh, the other thing you have to consider when designing, especially in these data science projects, uh, which are the most visualization techniques that are currently famous right now. Line charts are more famous right now, more desirable by audience. So line charts, putting line charts, pie chart, area chart is much better than putting some kind of other charts. So uh, try to, to stay up to date information currently. What are the most uh, data visualization charts that are accessible by client? Always update yourself with this information. Uh, according to your audience also, so you can put the most used or most famous popular tools on your dashboard to show some data. So uh, try to be up to date on this particular information that could change over time. You have to make sure you have to be up to be up to be date on those matters to have a better visualization, or a better dashboard. And the other would be around your number. So if you have 1 million uh, value for something and putting it 1 million by putting each zero numbers is not attractive, it's not advisable. So try to round your numbers, especially in charge, putting that long number is not a good practice at all. You can round it up and someone can understand the value. It wouldn't change anything. So uh, try to round up your numbers. Uh, and group related metrics. So for example, in one page that you're putting, try to put related concepts in there. So if you want to show statistics information in one page, gather all the statistics information on that page only. And on the other page, you can put another information or another type of uh, 
visualization on that area. So when the people start seeing some kind of statistics information, they want to see everything in the same area. It's just uh, either as a filter, it's either to find related information in the area. So groups related metrics in the same page or in the same area, whatever the design is. So use that as a best practice and be consistent. And this one is just how you display your information should be consistent. People shouldn't be surprised what to expect because your way of displaying your information is unpredictable. Making it predictable and consistent is much uh, needed. So be consistent with how you display information to your users and show hierarchy. So for example, this one means uh, what give prioritization for the most useful information or how you display your menus. So if you notice some web websites, about us page or information about us or contact us page are usually on the bottom or on the, on the end. The first menu that are given or home page or some kind of services or the visualization would be on the first. So when you put your designs, menus or number or any uh, regarding anything, the most important information should be on the front and the most that are not much important should be on the bottom or on the right left side depending on the drive it just the point is you should you should you should you should show hierarchy kind of information or style of designing on your dashboard and use clear labels this one is on graphs the label should have a clear uh, meaning so people will understand it more easily and you should remember this dashboard that you're building is for people and these people are not developers are not some people who are in the tech world usually they are just people who are outside of this development coding technology area so you have to remember you're building it for them usually they are the people who are going to be your clients so you have to take and that the majority of people are like that so you have to always consider when you design your dashboard it is for certain people like you or people who are similar like you. So you have to remember for what purpose you are designing the dashboard. And don't overdo it. Just make it perfect. Sometimes you can, people can overdo things. So you have to try to make it as simple as possible and keep evolving. This is just every, uh, when it comes to technology, there is always a change. So you have to evolve with that change to be the best in your in that area so this is just always you have to keep evolving with new inventions uh, let's talk about what is the data ink ratio is the third point that we mentioned before so data ink ratio is a concept created by edward taft so he's a famous author in the field of data visualization uh, and he said data ink ratio encourage charts creators to examine if all elements on the chart are relevant to the chart message. So, or in one, in Edward onward, he said above what else, show the data. So, what are the things, this is specifically on the charts that we are uh, going to show our data with by visualization. So, on those, on those charts, what are the information I should include on those charts, which are relevant, and how should I um, structure that chart this interface, how it should be. So you have to consider which are the most relevant. If there's unnecessary data or unnecessary design in that chart, it should be removed. That's not necessary according to Edward Taft. And he came up with this concept, the data ratio concept. So he's, uh, after data collecting, cleaning, processing, uh, when we convert our data to charts, that's our EDA process we have to make sure the message that we want to put on that chart should be straightforward it should be easy to understand so you have this data ink ratio will help you to get there and data ink ratio uh, refers to the ink or print that represent the actual data in the visualization so this ink that prints that's of uh, child data will, could be the color of the chart that you are using the numbers the line the line chart 
the lines on the chart, those are the things that are present on the chart. And we have to consider if those things on the chart are necessary or relevant to put in that amount. So the data ratio measures the proportion of the ink used to represent a data compared to the total amount of the ink used in graphical representation, uh, including land data elements. This is the official formula for the data ink ratio. So this is the concept behind data ink ratio. And the, the, the other important point when you are creating a chart for your analysis, um, you have to consider the colors, the effects, the legends, the labels, the image annotation that you put. Uh, your chart should give a clear message, like we said before. It should be clearer for your audience, whoever they are, uh, and it should save time. By this means, not only will readers get the message quicker, but you as a creator will save time avoiding confused users with ad hoc requests. So if your chart is with too much information, with too much these uh, elements on it, it will take time for users to understand the chart. They will take too much time trying to understand your chart, and it will also take your time when you develop that chart. So you have to decrease uh, your time wastage as much as you can when you visualize your data using charts. Uh, and when you have this simple chart that is readable, that safe time, that has a clear message, which automatically will also, you will also save space on your chart. So if you, there is the most relevant information, if you are making it, um, complex with unnecessary data, you wouldn't have much space to represent the most important information. So you also have to space uh, uh, on your chart. You have saving a space on your chart will give open spaces for important information. So you have to have this three points. You have to consider these three points when you draw your chart for visualization. So let's just see, for example, this one. So anyone who are seeing these two graphs, they have the same message, but the way they are represented is different. This is much, much easier for the eye. Anyone will choose this one. If you see a lot of problem here, the first the background, the color is not necessary at all. Uh, the numbers, as you can see, there's no rounding up. The entire number is um, mentioned here. That's unnecessary. You can just make it as simpler as, as this one by just making sure your designing is correct for the chart. The color, this is much easier. So the grid, the background, all if you remove that around these numbers and these numbers, if you see this, it has a, someone can understand, can guess what is the correct value here This to by just going through um, the Y label here, they can see it's just below the 22,000 value. So it's okay for them to understand. They don't have to know the exact number sometimes. So you don't have to mention two representation of a number to show one graph. So removing this one or just minimizing the number also enough, you can make your visualization more perfect. So this kind of unnecessary information on your chart should be uh, decreased from your design. Uh, here also, uh, the heading, if you see, it's a lot of sentences. You can easily represent it by a simple word, by a simple one sentence, which more your chart more free and clear to read. Starting from the heading, the labels, you have to consider everything when you, what you put on your chart. This is also another example. There's a lot of unnecessary data on this particular graph. The first, the background is very distracting. We don't need that. The grid was on unnecessary. And here you can see Facebook, Google, and Instagram. They are already, the company names are mentioned, but they also, you can see also the icons of those companies. That's not necessary. We can use either one of them, either the icon or this one. So this is two information for one particular data. 
representation. So you don't have, you, that's unnecessary. The, the way the numbers are written, again, it's not it, the whole word, the whole number is written. That's also not necessary. The colors could be destructive. So how uh, this naming is represent three ways. It's represented here, it's represented here, and it's represented by the icons. So this is unnecessary information to have on your chart. So you have to decrease this amount of data on your chart as much as possible. So if we can see these steps by removing a lot of things from the chart step by step, including the background, now much better, but there are still a lot of things that we have to remove step by step that I can start removed because in the sidebar, um, this representation of the bar chart is also removed stuff so that we have this much information. Again, the grid is removed, the number, is just step by step change to make the graph much better and easier for the eye. And the font size is increased for the header, it shouldn't be that large. Yeah, and this graph makes better. It just removes the y axis values and it puts them in each graph. If you can do that, that's also better. Here, that's the final product. This is much better for the audience than the first one. It can seem like it's you are beautifying the chart by adding too much things on it. But for the average audience, that's not the most attractive on this. Is much easier for the eye. So you have to consider your audience when you build this chart and unnecessary chart information, visualization information is not necessary in any requirement. So you have to be more careful how you design, how you visualize your data. Okay, so this is how the most important things that I can mention right now for design thinking. Uh, at this point that I mentioned now. And the other thing, when you build your dashboard, your dashboard needs to be responsive. This is uh, a normal, I mean, a required requirement when you are a front-end designer or when you build dashboard, your dashboard should be compatible with all devices, not only just for desktop. desktop if someone is viewing your dashboard on their mobile device, it should be compatible with that one as well. Uh, so how you can implement, how you can make your dashboard responsive, you need the skill of CSS text language, which I would recommend you to start tutorials on this one. You have to improve your CSS style to have a better styling for your dashboard. So how you can know this is when you build your dashboard as just, uh, just to give you a little hint how you can know if it is compatible with all devices is now we are on a Chrome. Here we are on a Chrome browser. So let me just click here. Let's just see. This is a Google platform, right? This is a website. So if you can just see first, you can see. Just click, right click and click inspect. So when you click inspect, this kind of feature will come on, on each browser. This is a normal, a default setting that you find in each browser. You can find it in Firefox, Chrome, and everything like that. So if you can see, uh, can see here, there is an option say toggle device to what? So if you click that, it will give you different dimensionalities that you can test your application. So the Google website, they have implemented compatible compatibility. Their website is compatible. Uh, it's respons responsive to different sizes. So you can test different sizes. So there's iPhone, Pixel, Samsung, Kaipa. There are different sizes that are by default found on your browser. So you can check that how responsive your design is by changing different designs here for those of you who are new for this. You can see here. So you have a lot of options on the browser to test how you make it, how much you make it 
you design compatible with different devices. So anyone can access Google and Dermo device with a better user interface as well. So you have to consider this when you are in the process of building a dashboard. Compatibility is also important as a professional label. So CSS is a very important tool to accomplish that. So if you already haven't started on learning CSS, for those of you who are new to it, please consider uh, starting tutorials on this particular language is very important too. Now let's see, we have a better design, we have designed something, it's compatible. Now the next step would be deployment. So for deployment, there are different deployment websites out there. Uh, I'm just mentioning here one of them. Uh, there are different, in different frameworks and different deployment sites or not only frameworks, but just there are a lot of uh, companies there who will deploy your front, uh, your design on the internet so anyone can access it anywhere. So one of them is Heroku. It's also uh, this Heroku website can let you deploy any uh, dashboard on their getaway. So you can use theirs. Uh, usually they are paid, but they, I think, I don't know the current information, but I will let you uh, deploy five projects for free. More than that, you have to have some kind of subscription. So to deploy something, it depends on which framework you are trying to deploy because the same thing that you are implementing in some of the different frameworks can be different. But here for a Python application, uh, you have to set up your configuration on the setups to uh, SH, the requirement of TXT, all the packages they should be installed. These are just uh, things that you have to include on your stream app if you want to deploy it on the Heroku website. So uh, Streamlit uh, actually have their own deployment, which is much easier, right? I think by now you already know it. They have this deploy option, which lets you deploy for free. You can get that uh, there, but I just want to mention Heroku and others. There are also others to deploy your application that you have to pass. You have to put the requirement configurations to be able for them to be able to run on those websites. So for those, when you, whatever deployment getaway you choose, they have a documentation, and according to that, you can deploy that. Or you can deploy your work. Or dashboard okay so i think uh, this is the end of the tutorial i'm just gonna end the tutorial by saying uh, one quote by edward Taft. he said never underestimate your audience uh, it is a common mistake made by presenters usually developers in this case it is not about you anymore it's about your audience relationship with your content at the end of the day, it doesn't matter how much work you have done on the back end. If you don't know how to present it, it really doesn't mean anything. No, no one cares about your hard work. They care what you, what you are presenting to them in how you present it. So you have, you don't, have, you shouldn't uh, give it a small thought on your design. It really matters. So I just want to close my tutorial by saying that's a very important thing to consider. Uh, there's uh, references that I put. Uh, also here I want to mention when it comes to designing, I think I forgot to mention last time, this dribble.com and pin interest if you don't know this website. If you don't have the idea what kind of design you should put, uh, there is, these two websites is where front-end developers, usually in UX designers, deploy designs here, and you can uh, find their design and get inspired by them. So let's say I want to see some data science dashboards, or let's just say dashboard only. Uh, let's so a lot of designs out there try just design something and deploy in this website. So it can be an inspiration for other developers or you can use them as well. So there's a lot of dashboard designs that you can take 
uh, be inspired to, to come up with their own or you even use the, their software and get the, a design for your application. So you can be specific on how you search it, maybe search it as a data science project, visualization dashboard, so you can find, if there's a, a dashboard de designed like that, you can find the source, the things that in interest also has the same functionality as like the driver, uh, just share, search what you want to see and it will give you different design ideas. Okay, so thank you. This is the presentation, hope that's useful. And these two is just usually developers use them to find images. They have different kind of image. Uh, if you want to include image on your design, you can refer these two. They have free downloadable image and you can use for your advantage. Okay, so this is the tutorial. If you have any questions, you can go ahead and ask. I don't think the tutorial is much that hard to understand, right? Uh, so is it clear? I guess you can give me some reactions that I think the job is. Okay. So if you don't have any questions, I guess we, we can end the tutorial. Okay, there's some question on the chat. How should we access the data? I mean, what can you... uh, I, I don't think I understand your question, Abraham. Are you asking the data for this week's challenge? Yeah. Where is the question in the data? What should we do? Yeah, go ahead, Abraham. Uh, I'm asking uh, where the data locally from our Postgres SQL and our Python can access the data from the database. But what are we going to do once we deploy the application on either Horuku or on Streaming Library? Yeah, you can use the remote database. Well, Heroku has its own Postgres remote database on their system, on their website. You can connect it to that and migrate the tables onto the remote database and you can access it. Uh, I would recommend you to read, if you are using Heroku, just check out their website, uh, their official website. It has a guideline how you can connect your database to your application. Okay, thanks. Okay. Okay, so uh, if there's any question, we can in the tutorial, just a last reaction that everything is clear and we can just move on. Okay, thank you everyone for joining in. Uh, we can end, sorry, cutting.